Last week, a friend of mine contacted me because he noticed a strange behavior on his PC. We later found out that his machine was infected by a malware called Glottipa. According to Malware Bytes Labs, Glottipa is a malware trojan that enables the threat actor to perform several actions on the affected Windows system, and it's usually dropped by exploit kits and it can download and install further malware and add the affected system to a botnet, and according to Wikipedia, a trojan is any malware that misleads users of its true intent. The term is derived from the ancient Greek story of the deceptive Trojan horse that led to the fall of the city of Troy. So the story is I wanted to take this opportunity and explain how a Trojan works and how to implement a simple Trojan in Python to demonstrate the idea. So let's dive in. When a Trojan malware is executed in the victim machine, it will first pretend as if it was a legit process to evade antivirus products. Any AV solutions first scan the malware for known signatures that verify this executable as malware. And if the malware passes the signature scan, the AV then checks the behavior of the process to see if it was doing anything nefarious like spying on the host or logging all the keystrokes or stealing sensitive data like passwords and credit card numbers. But since the Trojan acts like a legit process, it will most likely evade detection by using a variety of techniques, like process hollowing or injecting the malicious code into a legit process. This is so common in red teaming when you want to evade EDR and AV products. Once the Trojan evades detection, it will inject the malicious code into a legit process or drop it to disk, and then it will pass the execution flow to it. The drop malware can be literally anything from keylogger to a password stealer or even a zero day exploit. The sky is the limit. Now let's look at a simple implementation of a Trojan malware in Python. In a Python Trojan, we will first execute the Trojan, then we will fork a chai process. Then we will have the parent process execute the logic code, which will be a program that gives information about the machine like CPU usage and RAM usage, etc. After that, we will have the chai process execute the Trojan. The Trojan will decompress the malware blob, then write it to disk, and pass the execution flow to it. This might look complicated, so let's look at the code to see the bigger picture. In a Trojan script, we import the PSUtil module to get all the machine status like the CPU usage and RAM usage. The Base64 module for Base64 encoding. The Time module to sleep each 2 seconds. GZ module to decompress the malware. OS to execute the malware. We start by running the main function. We first fork a child process. Forking just like creating a new process under the parent or the original process within the context of the program that can execute any block of code in parallel with the parent process. We first check the process ID. If it equals to one, that means this is the parent process. The parent process will execute the logic code. Here we start a while true loop, then we grab the percentage of the used CPU, RAM, disk, and the number of running processes on the system. And then we display everything on the screen, and we sleep each two seconds, and we keep looping. However, if the process ID equal to or less than zero, then that means this is the chai process. The chai process will execute the Trojan function. In the Trojan function, we start by opening a hidden file in write mode. Then we base64 decode this blob, and then we gzip decompress it. Then we write the decompressed data to the .malware.py file. Then we close it. And finally, we execute it. This blob is just base64 encoded gzip compressed data. You can verify that by running the file command on it. When we decompress this file, we will get back the original malware.py file. In the malware.py script, we import a request module to make HTTP requests, socket to create a socket to connect to the C2 server, base64 for base64 encoding. 
JSON to encode data in JSON format, RE for regular expressions, and finally the OS module. We start by calling the main function as usual. In the main function, we first grab the host name of the machine. Then we make HTTP GET request to IP API to get the public IP address of the machine. The user agent header here is necessary so that the request doesn't get flagged as bot. Then we initiate the Bitcoin addresses list and the email addresses list to store all found Bitcoins and emails. Then we recursively search inside the home directory for files that contain Bitcoin addresses and emails. By the way, I put some dummy data inside the home directory to demonstrate this process. Here we open each file in read mode and inside this try block we give the contents of each file and then we look inside it for Bitcoin addresses or email addresses. This regex here to match both legacy Bitcoin addresses and new Bitcoin addresses. And this regex matches any valid email address. Then we check if we found any Bitcoin addresses. And if so, we add them to the Bitcoin addresses list. And the same thing here for emails. Then we run this one bash liner to grab all open ports on the victim machine. We run the NASTAC command and we grab for listening ports along with the broadcast IP address. And after we grab all the data we want from the victim machine, we store them in the data dictionary or object. And we encode the data object in JSON format and base64 encode it. And finally, we create a new TCP socket and then we connect to the IP address of the command and control server on port lead. Then we send the data to it and then we close the socket. In the command and control server, we create a new TCP socket and then we listen on localhost on port lead. And then we queue up to five requests. Then we start a while true loop to receive all data that has been sent by the Trojan. Then we open a file each time we receive new data and give it any name with 10 random alphabet letters. And finally, we base64 decode the data we received and write it to the open file. Now let's run the command and control server and execute the Trojan. As you can see here, when we executed the Trojan, the legit code got executed and displayed on the screen. However, when you look at the C2 server, you will see a connection received from the malware that we wrote to disk. And you can find the malware hidden in the Trojan directory. Because remember, we decompressed it and wrote it to disk. Now in the C2 server directory, you can find the data we grabbed from the victim machine stored in a file with a random name generated by the command and control server. You can cut out the contents of the file and pipe it to JQ for better call for output. And as you can see, these are the data that we got from the victim machine. You will rarely find Trojans that are written in Python because most of this kind of malware are coded in C++ and other low level programming languages where packers and obfuscation are heavily used and other variety of techniques to try to evade EDR or AV products. This was a simple demonstration of the Trojan malware. Hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and peace.